Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at how easy it is to get up and running with DeepSeek inside of Azure Logic Apps. DeepSeek has been all the rave lately ever since it was first launched in late December 2024. It's all the rave because it offers similar performance to other large language models out there today at just a fraction of the cost. We'll see that in more detail inside our video. Another important factor you'll want to keep in mind when looking at DeepSeek, that although it's open source and you can view all the source code on GitHub, is that it is a Chinese-based company. Much like some of the other Chinese-based companies that get a lot of headlines today, this too may be doing things with your data that you might not intend. So keep that in mind when working with this model. With that, let's jump in and take a look at how to get started with DeepSeek. Before we get started, let's talk about why we would want to call DeepSeek from a Logic app in the first place. Well, for starters, we get access to over 1,400 different connectors inside of the Logic Apps ecosystem. In this example, I'm using an HTTP request, but it could have as easily have been an email or a message from ServiceNow that triggered this workflow. That is the simplicity of using Azure Logic Apps. Before we jump into the workflow, Let's first jump over and take a look at the pricing for Azure OpenAI. You can see here that the GPT-40 model runs about $2.50 per million tokens on the input and about $10 on the output. Let's compare that to DeepSeek, that the pricing is significantly cheaper. Now the pricing is gonna change on February 8th, but even with the pricing on February 8th, we're looking at seven cents on the input side and 28 cents on the output side. Now you might be thinking, well, how does this model compare to ChatGPT's model, the 4.0? Well, here's published data that DeepSeek put together to show that it is a very competitive model to many of the options out there today. Given how close it compares to these models, it operates at just a fraction of the cost of GPT 4.0. So this could be a strong, compelling use case to switching to this model as compared to other alternatives. If you're brand new to DeepSeek, it's very simple to get started. All you need is an API key. To get an API key, you simply come over here, go to deepseek.com, and in the top right, click API platform, and then come down here and say, sign up to create an account. Once you create an account, you'll have the option to add money to your account in order to leverage your API. You can start with adding just $2, and after tax, it's $2.12. It's a very good investment to get up and running with DeepSeek. Once you have your API key, let's take a look at how we would use that to make this call in this logic app. First off, I come here and create a compose shape, and this is just using the input schema that's outlined in the help documentation. But instead of the content being static, I'm reading the body from my inbound HTTP call. Then I simply come down here to DeepSeek and make an HTTP post to their endpoint. I set an authorization header with bare space my API key. This is your bearer token. That's going to be your API key. I set the content type to application JSON, and then I simply set the body as the output of my compose shape. And it's really that simple. My response message is just going to be the body of the output of this HTTP call. So now let's take a look at how we run this in Postman. I'm going to jump over to Postman, and I already have this set up to the right URL address. And I simply come over here. I'm going to make a raw call of text. And I'm going to say, what is the square root of 49? And see how I would go off and complete this exercise. It'll take it just a moment. And sure enough, you have the response here. And it says the square root of 49 is 7. So now this is just an ultra trivial example of showing you how easy it is to set up your logic app to call into DeepSeek. There's lots of great documentation and other sample videos out there from other resources that go into much more detail of things you can do with DeepSeek. This is just the beginning. Now make sure you keep in mind that it is a Chinese company and that any data you send to them, you're not really sure what's gonna to happen to it. So I would use this for things like updating titles of a YouTube video or something like that. I would definitely be mindful of the data that I'm sending into this model, uh, at least for now. Now the model is fully open source, so you can view it in GitHub and get a little more idea about what's going on behind the scenes. So thank you for taking a look at this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.